As video editors, we're always looking for ways to speed up our workflow. And one of the most common things I hear is keyboard shortcuts. Shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts. Shortcuts. Cool shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts. But there's a problem. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. You get lost in forums, Discord chats, trying to find the right name or words to describe a shortcut that most definitely should exist. Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you some shortcuts that you should know as a video editor because they will for sure speed things up. But most of all, I want to focus on what they're actually called because some of them I've been hunting down for a hot minute because they've got some absurd names. Like, seriously. So let's speed through some of the ones you probably find yourself using the most. Apply default transition to selection. This one is simply putting a hotkey or a shortcut between video clips and audio clips. It's the same one. And if you need to change that, go into your effects and set your desired effect as the default transition. Nesting your clips. Instead of always selecting your clips, right clicking, going up to nest, you can set that as a shortcut and you can focus on those visual effects and those cool transitions. Just remember to stay organized. Talking about organization, there's a shortcut for creating new bins in your project panel menu. And bins are just folders we just call them bins in Premiere Pro, but yeah, use them. Now when you're in your timeline and you want to select a bunch of clips, instead of using your mouse to select them, hoping you haven't left any behind, you can always use A or Shift A, which are the default shortcuts to select all the clips forward or backward. If you ever have a clip that you want to put in between other clips, instead of selecting those, nudging them and then putting that clip in place, just hold down command while you're dragging the clip and that will just automatically nudge everything to the right. If you ever wanted to precisely nudge your clips in your timeline, by default, you could just select a clip, press command and left or right to move them by one frame or add shift to that and move them by five frames. If you're ever working on a big project and you just want to zoom out to see how things are looking, zoom to sequence is one I use all the time. It's a default shortcut. You just press it once, it zooms out, you press it again and it zooms back to where you were to continue editing. If you ever wanted to access your audio game controls nice and quick, instead of Right clicking, going up to audio again, you can just press G by default and there you go. Add edit. This will basically chop up the clip where the playhead is. I use it all the time. And to be honest, I've stopped using the razor tool because of it. You can add edit on one clip or multiple tracks, depending on the shortcut. If you ever wanted to bring up the speed and duration menu, instead of right clicking, going up to speed and duration, you can just press command R by default. That will bring up the clip so you can just reverse the clip or adjust the speed of duration. Or if you wanted to adjust the speed of duration and be really exact with it, I would use the flex key, which is R by default. And that brings up the rate stretch tool. So you got some options there. If you ever wanted to export your selected clips, instead of setting your in and out point and kind of just trying to adjust it, just select a clip and there's a shortcut called mark selection. You do that, it sets your in and out points exactly where the clip is, and then you just export from there. If you ever wanted to clear those in and out points really nice and quick, there's a shortcut for that called clear in and out. When you're going through long interviews or videos, or to be honest, when I'm going through this video right here, when I'm editing it, I'm gonna double speed it. It's not called double speed though, it's called shutter right, shutter left is reverse speed, and the more you press those at two X's, three X's, four X's, and definitely something to have in the bag when you want to speed things up. When you're working on a big timeline and you got just stacks and stacks of stuff on top of each other, enable and disable clips. Instead of right clicking, enable or disable a clip to kind of view what you've got in the program monitor, create a shortcut for it. It will save you so much trouble and um, yeah, just, just do it. This next one is in the newest version of Premiere Pro and I'm so glad they brought it from After Effects where you can toggle multiple clips. Now, instead of having to select each clip on the left-hand side to solo or mute or hide, you could just press command and just scroll through all of them and that will just do uh, what you need it to do really quick. Also in the new version of Premiere Pro, you can zoom into your program monitor up to 1600%. Technically, that should make masking a bit easier, but I think we've got some work to do on that one. You can set shortcuts on that. You can zoom in or out or fit to the original scale of it. The shortcut is called zoom monitor in, zoom monitor out, or zoom monitor to fit. If you've been editing for a while or you're new at editing, this is something you need regardless, is the Q and W keys. The exact name for them is ripple trim previous edit to playhead or ripple trim next edit to playhead. Basically what that does is where the playhead is, it'll just ripple trim to the left or right up to the cut. If you don't use these keys, trust me, start using them. Now, every editor I talk to 
kind of hates keyframing in Premiere Pro and I don't blame them. It's much easier in After Effects and in After Effects you can just press F9 and it'll just easy ease stuff that will just make things a lot smoother. Well, you can program those shortcuts into Premiere Pro, but the name is a bit weird. The name is Keyframe Temporal Interpolation Ease In or Ease Out. So instead of having to right click and then selecting it from the menu, just use a shortcut and Oh my days. It'll save you so much time, especially when you're working with a lot of stuff and a lot of parameters. It's not one of the default ones, but if you deal with keyframes, do it. The next two I showed some of the guys on the team and I had to go digging for those into like forums and discord chats to find out what they're actually called. So how would I resize this color map? Okay, so you'd click on the color map and then you'd go into the effects controls and then you'd go into scale and then you'd shrink the scale. Okay, and then move it around that way. Yeah. Or I could double click on that and then resize it. Yeah. The only problem with that is if I have multiple of those. Doesn't know what to click on. Guess what, Nick? There's a <laughs> there's a shortcut of for that. Of course there is. You click on it and there's a shortcut that just toggles the motion. That instead of going up and clicking it. Going up here, clicking that, doing that, clicking there, clicking motion, resizing that, and then you toggle the wrong thing. There's a, basically, you click on whatever clip you want to resize, press the shortcut, and then, there. Press the shortcut, resize. Press the shortcut, resize. What's the shortcut? Tell me the shortcut. All right. So the shortcut for that, like, obviously you can put custom shortcut, but I, like, if anything, I want you to react to the name of this, because the name of it is Activate Direct Manipulation in Program Monitor. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> what? Huh. So you'd have to have known to type that into the hot key. Exactly. So select the clip, press that shortcut, and then it's as if you pressed motion in your effects control. So let me know in the comments if you actually knew about this one, because I definitely did not. Can you talk me through like, how would I put a crop effect on that? Okay, so you would go into the effects tab, and then you type crop in the search bar. Uh, effects. Go to the effects panel on your left and then type in crop and then just drag it on. That's all I would do. All right, so I'll start from the same point. You watching? Okay. I'm okay, selecting. Yep. Selecting. Done. Oh. Oh, you see, you did something. Dang, okay. Oh, my all right. God. <laughs> <laughs> but that's. <laughs> oh, that is the most. <laughs> That is so <laughs> stupid. I cannot believe I haven't figured that out until right now. <laughs> now, usually when you want to apply an effect to a video clip or audio clip, you'd still have to go to your effects, go to the search bar, look for the effect, and then drag it onto your clip. But there's a shortcut. This one involves two, actually. One is to select the effects window, and then one is to actually select the find box. So it just gets your cursor into the find box so you can type in whatever effect you want. So for me, it's F and Command F, only because I use a bunch of older programs that use the same shortcuts. So F brings up the effects, Command F gets me into the search bar. I type in whatever I want, double click on the effect and applied. Easy as that. If you ever wanted to find out more tips and tricks about Premiere Pro, check out this playlist with things that you possibly never knew about Premiere Pro in a bit.